Today I'm continuing my series on general relativity and this time I wanted to talk about the precession of the perihelion of Mercury and what's the actual cause in terms of what's happening with the quantum field. And in quantum field theory the cause is due to an electromagnetic type interaction rather than space bending, curving, and time dilating. And this is a fairly simple to understand uh, once you understand a little bit of the basics of mechanics. The precession of peri perihelion happens because you have an elliptical orbit and the axis of that orbit changes over time. So you get this spiraling effect if you map it out over time. And most of the precession happens because there are other planets tugging on each planet, which causes the planets to orbit so that their perihelion precesses. None of the planets have an exactly circular orbit, so there's, they're always a little bit oblong. Uh, in this case, I'm, I've exaggerated the rate of precession to illustrate. But normally you would, can think of it as just having an elliptical orbit. And if there were no additional forces involved, a planet would just stay in a single fixed additional orbit and there'd be no precession. Now, scientists who study orbital mechanics have already talked about how you get precession with an additional force. And two of those that I've studied, Danby wrote about in his book of orbital mechanics and also Tom Van Flandern wrote a paper about it. And what happens is if you have a force that's perpendicular everywhere to the velocity, the direction of the acceleration, or the direction of the velocity. And if you're getting exactly perpendicular forces like this, then those forces are not directed at the sun. And because they're not directed at the sun, there's a net force that causes a precession. And Tom Van Flander said it's a tangential pseudo force. Well, in quantum field theory, it's a real force. In real force theory. And I'll explain how that happens. Because we're looking at a force that's tangential to the velocity, we're looking at a force that behaves Lorentz force law. And Lorentz force law in electromagnetic theory is F equals QV cross B, where Q is the charge, B is the velocity, and B is the magnetic field. So in order for this to happen with neutral bodies, we'd have to have a neutral force where we have the force on matter is some sort of charge of matter, Q sub n, multiplied by velocity times some sort of matter magnetic field. Then we have to have some sort of field that's produced due to the motion of matter. Now to understand where this field comes from, we can go back and think about the speed of light limit on electrically neutral bodies. Electrically neutral bodies moving through space cannot exceed the speed of light. Well, the speed of light is a function of the permittivity and permeability. C equals 1 over the square root of permittivity times permeability. And the permeability and permittivity arise from the quantum field. So the speed of light is a property of the quantum field. And with an electrically charged body moving, the electric charge moves, it causes the quantum field dipoles to rotate. Quantum field dipoles rotation is limited by the van der Waals torque. The motion of the charge is limited by the quantum van der Waals torque. And so, and the electric and magnetic fields that develop are limited by the quantum van der Waals torque. 
So the quantum torque of space regulates the motion. And so when a body moves, it is interacting somehow electrically, or else we wouldn't have the speed of light limit arising for neutral bodies. Neutral bodies could essentially have an infinite maximum velocity if they weren't interacting with the quantum field to slow it. And the quantum field interacts in ways that produce the permittivity and permeability constant and the speed of light limit which arise electromagnetically. So we have an effect going on where as a neutral body moves through space, it's causing the quantum fluctuations to rotate. And the quantum fluctuation rotation is causing the bodies to move. And this is a form of self-induction that's just like the electromagnetic self-induction where charge motion causes a magnetic field to develop, a magnetic field to develop, which is quantum dipole rotation, causes the charge to move. Same thing happen, happens with electrically neutral bodies. So what's happening is as a body moves, it's developing a matter magnetic field around it. And from this simple developed matter magnetic field, we end up with an entire force that obeys Maxwell's equations, including the Lorentz force. So as a body rotates, like the sun, it causes quantum dipoles to rotate around it. If you're rotating this way, the dipoles will align themselves with the rotation and counter-rotate. Except when you have an orbit and you have a body going this way, the dipoles will rotate one way on one side and the other way on the other side, as we see with this chart where we have motion. So we get counter-rotation depending on whether it's on the inside or outside. So the sun creates a matter magnetic field due to its rotation and it's and you also get matter magnetic field components due to the motion of all the other planets and every other body in the solar system that interacts with Mercury and the other planets. And so all these effects contribute to a matter magnetic field that Mercury is crossing through. And as Mercury crosses through this matter magnetic field, it's primarily due to the Sun's rotation, then you have a, a tangential force, a real tangential force, not a pseudo force as, as Van Flander talked about. It's a real force. And it's a real tangential force that causes additional precession that was missed in Newtonian theory. And the reason it's missed is because physicists never bother to explain inertia. And once you explain the physical cause of inertia and the physical interactions of inertia, you realize that you have to have a maximal type force that deals with electrically neutral bodies. And this is also true of spinning tops and gyroscopes. Spinning tops and gyroscopes, when a top tilts over, the downward acceleration causes a tangential force. The tangential force causes it to precess. The acceleration in the direction of precession causes a tangential force upward. And it's this upward force that causes it to not just tip over due to gravity, so that the upward force opposes gravity, causing the top to stay up, at least for a while. It eventually loses speed and, and tips over due to the uh, friction at the tip. But the interaction is with the quantum field when you're talking about the top. 
when a top is spinning, the quantum field's rotating. And it's the interaction between the quantum field that causes it to process. And then the precession to cause it to tip upward. It's the quantum field that's pushing on the top, causing it to move. And this, so this force gives us a number of different um, matter magnetic terms, and some of them have been described in using general relativity. One is the lens steering effect, and another is the de Sitter precession, which are two types of precession basically coming out of this type of field that's developed due to solar or planetary rotation. This also leads to other types of tidal forces that develop between bodies that don't have tides because they don't have water. They don't have an unstable uh, medium. They don't have an unstable mass distribution, yet they still develop tidal forces. And these tidal forces are due to the neutral matter magnetic force that follows Maxwell's laws. And lastly, we have a Lorentz force where planets or stars in a galaxy are accelerated inward due to a tangential Lorentz-like force. And that force also explains dark matter. It's the missing force that is the reason why physicists just can't use Newtonian gravity because they forget about this tangential force that has to develop if you actually try to understand inertia and tops and gyroscopes you end up with this Lorentz-like matter force that causes an additional acceleration. And as far as the spiral galaxies, you also have an effect in electromagnetism where two wires with current in the same direction, the wires will be attracted to each other, they'll be pushed together. Same thing happens with two stars going in the same direction. There's a force pushing them together. And that causes the banding. And so we can describe a lot of orbital mechanics that aren't explained by Newton's laws of gravity alone by dealing with this neutral, uh, electrically neutral Maxwell force that arises due to uh, inertial mechanics. But because everybody in electromagnetic theory also is made of matter and has mass, it's already built into our electromagnetic theories. We just don't think of it in separate terms. We already have the matter magnetic or kinetic type force interactions built in. Although what we're missing is the development of a, of a matter magnetic field due to the motion of electrically neutral bodies. And I'll talk about this a little bit more. Eventually I'll do a video on, on the lens steering effect and the sitter precession, uh, although it should be pretty obvious how to develop those if, you, if you're familiar with them. Anyway, so the precession of the perihelion and mercury problem is solved very simply in electromagnetic theory of gravity and general relativity. And as are all the proofs of general relativity involving electrically neutral bodies. I did another video recently on what happens with photons and how photons interact due to inter electromagnetic interactions with matter. So basically we can prove all the general proofs of, of general relativity uh, using electromagnetic force interactions. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you do, please like it and subscribe if you want to hear more and share it with your physicist friends who you think would be interested. Feel free to comment below if you have questions or criticisms. 
And then I have some books where I describe this. My book, The Zero Point Universe, steps through this uh, briefly. And I also talk about it in my book, 100 Greatest Lives in Physics. And I touch on it just briefly in my part particle theory book. And I'm a retired independent researcher, so if you buy one of my books, that helps support me in my retirement, and I appreciate that. And I also have a Patreon account, if you'd rather go that way. So thanks for watching.